Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm really excited to be trying out Hannah Muller's Expression Watercolour Paper and whilst I talk about its properties and give you my first impressions, I'll be showing you how I painted this bright and colourful watercolour painting of a panda. So I hope you enjoy the video and find it interesting or useful. All the materials I'm using today will be listed in the description box along with a reference photo from Pixabay if you want to go and check those out. So this 9.4 by 11.8 inch block of paper is cold pressed, weighs 140 pounds and is 100% cotton. It contains 20 sheets of acid free natural white paper which is surface sized and I'll talk more about what that means and how it affects the painting process as we go through the video. On the inside cover of the block we are told that this expression watercolour paper is suitable for all wet painting techniques and can be used with masking fluid, masking tape and is resistant to erasing. The paper is also light resistant and boasts extreme longevity. So let's get into the painting and test it out. I've already transferred my pencil sketch onto the paper and lightened it using a kneaded eraser. I've also taped around the edges with washi tape for a nice crisp white border. I want to see what sort of results you can get with salt on this paper too so I've got some regular table salt my watercolours in pans and a few different size paintbrushes. I'm going to start this painting with a loose wet on wet background so I'm pre-wetting the area I want to paint first with clean water and my size 12 round brush. This paper is in a block which means that it is glued on all four sides so there's less chance of it warping or buckling when you add water. For the wet in wet technique you need to make sure that the area you want to add paint to is evenly wet and you're aiming for a nice glossy sheen over the paper without any puddles. On larger sheets of paper this may mean that some areas begin to dry before others so it's worth taking the time to make sure the paper is as evenly wet as possible. With this paper I did notice that it dried more quickly than either my Archer's paper or my Etcher's sketchbook paper. So I went over with several layers of clean water before I had that nice even sheen across the paper. With that done I could then begin to paint on my watercolour. I'm using a bright orangey yellow for this and this one is New Gamboge by Daniel Smith. I found the paint bled out really nicely onto the surface of the wet paper as you might expect using the wet on wet technique but how well the pigment spreads out on the paper depends on the individual pigments used as well as something called sizing. But what is sizing and what does it do? Well sizing has nothing to do with the dimensions of the paper. Sizing is a substance, usually gelatin, that is added to watercolour paper during the manufacturing process to control the absorbency and spread of water on the paper. Watercolour paper can be externally or surface sized like this paper where the paper is dipped or sprayed after manufacture or it can be internally sized where the sizing is added to the cotton during manufacture and some papers have both internal and external sizing. And this is why these papers like Archer's for example tend to be more expensive. But what does the sizing do? Well, sizing acts a bit like an invisible barrier between the paper and your paint, which prevents paint from sinking straight into the fibres of the paper like it would on tissue for example. Instead it allows the watercolour to move more freely on the surface of the paper, giving you longer to work with the paint and enabling you to use different watercolour techniques like the wet in wet technique I'm using here. It also makes watercolour paper stronger and better able to cope with multiple layers or wet washes when lower student grade or wood pulp papers would fall apart. I really love building up my watercolour paintings in layers, painting from light to dark and I enjoy experimenting with different techniques too so having a paper that can cope with all of this is really important to me. Here as the background is starting to dry I'm adding in some drops of clean water to create some deliberate watercolour blooms just to add a bit of interest. The background's dry now so I'm going to start painting the panda and for this I've chosen Payne's Blue Grey by Daniel Smith, Indigo by Schminker, 
Magello Blue by Mission Gold, and Windsor Violet by Windsor & Newton. I thought these colours would contrast well with a warm yellow background. I pre-wet my paper with clean water again, as I want to mix some of these colours on the surface of the damp paper, and paint the panda quite loosely. I start off at the top of the panda's head with some watery indigo, avoiding the bright highlight area and keeping the edges soft here by running along the paintage with a clean damp brush. Next I started to drop in some of the Payne's Blue Grey by the panda's nose and mouth, and let the colours bleed and mix together on the surface of the damp paper. Where the values were darkest, I simply added more concentrated Payne's Blue Grey and used the very tip of my brush to gently add in the suggestion of some fur texture. I continue to paint in the same way, moving down and across the panda's head, pre-wetting and painting sections of fur at a time, and softening any hard edges with a clean damp brush. And I really enjoyed this part of the painting, as the paint seemed to flow and mix so easily on the surface of the damp paper. It reminded me a bit of painting on Fabriano Artistico cold press paper, in the way it behaves, although in my opinion it does appear to be slightly less textured than both Fabriano and Archer's. And this might explain why the paint flows so easily, and also dries a bit quicker than I'm used to as well. This is still my first time painting on this paper though, so I'd love to know what you think and how you would compare this paper to any other watercolour papers you've tried. Here I decided to add in some of the new gamboge I'd used for the background onto the lightest part of the fur on this right hand side, just to help tie it all together. I also added in some Windsor Violet around the neck to complete this first layer of fur. Then I used mid yellow blue for the eye and mixed into this some Windsor Red to paint the mouth. Next it was time to paint those characteristic dark ears and the rest of the dark fur on the panda's neck and body. I wanted to have a really concentrated dark pigment here and a bit more control to paint in some fur detail around the edges. So to achieve this, I painted onto dry paper with a mixture of Payne's Blue Grey and Neutral Tint. I used the tip of my brush and a flicking motion following the direction of fur growth to help make the fur here look more realistic. For the inside of the ear though, I wanted a softer, fuzzy edge, so pre-wet the paper with clean water before dropping in first indigo and then another layer of my Payne's Blue Grey and Neutral Tint mix. Moving down the neck, I used a similar technique as before, only this time I used longer brush strokes and a bit of negative painting to carve out some white fur detail. Having finished the rest of the fur on the body and around the panda's eye, I turned my attentions next to the bamboo shoots and leaves. I had deliberately painted over a lot of these with my background colour, as I wanted some of the yellow to shine through in subsequent layers, but I had also left part of the left hand corner free of any background colour just to make the painting look a bit more interesting. I didn't have too many problems adding multiple layers of watercolour on this paper, but I did find that the paint would lift quite easily, so I had to make sure that the underneath layers were completely dry before adding the next layer and that I was being really gentle with my brush strokes and not applying too much water so I didn't disturb anything underneath. You can use this to your advantage though for lifting out highlights or even mistakes, but again this reminded me of my first impressions painting a line cub on Fabriano Artistico paper, and I'll leave a link to that video in the card above if you haven't seen it or want to go and give it a watch. 
To paint the leaves, I use the wet on dry method and a smaller brush for more precision and control. I applied my first layer of green watercolour onto the dry paper and then either dropped in other colours or lifted out lighter areas. And whilst this part of the painting was a bit more time consuming, I was surprised to find myself really relaxing and enjoying it. Painting leaves is something I tend to struggle with, but I actually quite liked the way they turned out against the background. Now another technique I wanted to test out on this paper and that I mentioned at the start of the video was adding salt and this is a really quick, easy and effective way to create texture and add interest to any watercolour painting. So I thought I'd use it for the panda's fur. First though I needed to re-wet my paper so I went in with another loose layer of mid yellow blue and added winds of violet some more Magello Blue and Indigo and a bit more Payne's Blue Grey into the shadow areas. Then I let the paper sit for a few minutes before sprinkling on some regular table salt. Timing is really important for this technique to work as if your paper is too wet or too dry, nothing much will happen. When you do time it right though, the results are pretty amazing and I loved how this turned out. With the painting dry though, I could see that I needed to add another darker layer of fur to the panda's body to ramp up the contrast a bit. I used the same colour mix as before, but this time I applied it more concentrated with a dry size 3 flat brush and this helped to get finer fur and a more natural look. Now if you've watched my latest art haul video you might remember that I bought one of Jean Haynes watercolour books called Atmospheric Watercolours and I've been really enjoying it. I wanted to share with you one of her tips which came to mind when I was nearing the end of this painting. She says, try stopping long before you have finished painting. And then goes on to say, you will be amazed at how often you made the right decision to walk away. I was really tempted to go back and add another layer of paint to the panda's fur, as I could see from my reference photo that the values weren't quite dark enough on the left hand side. But I also didn't want to cover up the salt effect that I'd really liked, so as hard as it was I let it be, and walked away, only coming back to add in a few finishing touches like the whiskers here. All that's left to do now is to remove the tape, but despite claims that both masking tape and masking fluid can be easily removed, I did get a bit of paper lifting off with the tape. And this is not a problem I've had before with this particular tape on Arches paper, so I'm not 100% confident of how it would do with masking fluid. But let me know if that's something you've had experience or issues with. All in all though, I did love how bright my colours looked on this paper and really enjoyed the painting process and testing out a few different techniques. So my first impressions are good and I'm looking forward to getting more practice with this paper in future paintings. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you're visiting it for the first time and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.